Hello and welcome to Planet 40k. Today we will be discussing the Doomsday Arc and how it works within the new Necron Codex. So the Doomsday Arc is a heavy support option within the Codex. It can go into any dynasty. It's a vehicle that can fly and it has the quantum shielding keyword too. So when you buy this kit from Games Workshop, you can select whether you want to glue it up as a Ghost Arc or a Doomsday Arc, or you can even find a YouTube tutorial on how to magnetise the model so that you've got both when needed. So as for costs, it's 10 power level or 190 points if you're playing points. Looking at the stats then, movement 12 inch, weapon skill 6 plus, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 6, toughness 6, wounds 14, attacks 3, leadership 10 and a 3 plus save. So when the arc dips under 7 moons remain in, its movement drops 4 inches and its ballistic skill goes down 1 and on top of that the attacks become d3 rather than 3. Then when it's on 3 wounds or less it drops another 4 inch movement, ballistic skill drops again another 1 to 5 plus ballistic skill and its attacks are just a flat 1. So since the last codex it has had an improved armor save which is now a 3 plus which is a lot nicer. So going into abilities, Living Metal has always regained a lost wound at the start of the turn. Command Protocols, which is your Necron Doctrines, granting an army-wide pre-planned buff each battle round. That's the two more commonly known abilities in the book. It also has the Explodes ability, so when it's destroyed, you roll a dice. On a 6+, plus, it blows up, causing any unit within 6 inches D3 mortal wounds. It's got Hovering, which isn't really an ability, more just for game technicalities. So you can measure from either the base or the hull, whichever is closer. I mean the reason they've added this in is because you can use this to your advantage slightly by pivoting the model without actually moving it. And as the arc is quite long, you'll gain a lot of range from it when firing. Then finally it's got the new quantum shielding. So this has changed since the last codex. So now you've got a 5 plus invun save. And in addition, each attack made against the arc that rolls an unmodified roll of a 1, 2 or 3 will fail regardless of its abilities of the weapon or the weapon's strength. I quite like this as the invun obviously is welcomed and it also effectively blocks higher strength weapons such as strength 7 or strength 8 or wounded on 3s. Also those mega weapons that are strength 12 also can't wound you on 2s. Everything needs 4s minimum. So it kind of feels like it's giving you a toughness value of 8 against the stronger weapons but against the weaker weapons such as bolters they still need 5s. Quantum shielding's always been a bit of a weird rule, but regardless, it's helping our Necron vehicle stay alive. Then combining it with the 5 plus invun save and living metal on top is pretty sweet. Okay, so that's the ability. Let's get stuck into the weapons then. I'll quickly go over the small stuff first. So it's got two Gorse Flayer arrays, They're both 24 inch range, rapid fire 5, strength 4, minus 1 AP and 1 damage. It's basically the same weapon as a warrior weapon. Not bad if you're within rapid fire, so you'll be taking 20 shots there. Hitting on 3s, so you're roughly going to be getting 13 hits. Wounding Toughness 3 units on 3s, giving you about 9 wounds. Wounding Toughness 4 models on 4s, so you're going to get about 6 or 7 wounds. And going against Toughness 5, 6 and 7, you're going to need 5s. So it's about 4 or 5 wounds approximately there. To be honest though, you're not really bringing the Doomsday Arc for its small arms fire here. You're most likely keeping your arc at the back of the table due to its next weapon. So this next weapon comes with 2 profiles, and it all depends on whether you didn't move or not during the turn. So it's the Doomsday Cannon of course. So the first part of the profile is its low power variant which is 36 inch range, heavy D6, strength 8, minus 2 AP and D3 damage with the blast keyword. So if you didn't move you'll always be using the high powered variant which is the following. So its range is 72 inches, it's still heavy D6, strength 10, minus 5 AP and D6 damage. Again blast. So if you did stay stationary, there's no reason not to use the high powered version as it's also heavy D6 with blasts it's, and it's just better at everything else. And that range allows you to be as far back as possible. So strength 10 is wounding most infantry on 2s with the exception of a few toughness 6 guys in the game. It's also wounding vehicles on a 3+, plus, even your land raiders and other big toughness 8 models. They're being wounded on 3s too. Minus 5 AP only really leaves your opponent on invun saves and D6 damage is really nice. If you roll well on the amount of shots you're getting, you could be doing a lot of damage with a max potential damage outcome of 36 damage. That's if you roll insanely well. Okay, let's discuss synergy then. So methods of making this unit even better than it already is. So firstly, looking at the codes, you've got the Mephrit Dynasty code, which grants an additional 3-inch range to all of its weapons here. And if you're firing at half range, you're going to get an additional minus 1 AP modifier. This won't have much effect on your cannon, but now your Gorse weapons are 27-inch range and minus 2 AP if you fire within half. Then the Hilak Dynasty code gives you an army-wide objective secured. 
and your arc is pretty resilient so park it on an objective and your opponent's going to have a headache the code also turns your opponent's minus one ap weapons into zero ap weapons if they are targeting your arc and your arc is wholly within your deployment zone which it definitely will be in the zwarkhan dynasty code allows you to shrug off mortal wounds on a five plus but also grants each unit in the faction to re-roll one wound roll which could be really vital if you roll poorly on your wound roll dice. Finally, the Saltac Dynasty Code lets you rapid fire up to 18 inch, which will aid your gorse flayers, getting more juice out of them in the game. Out of the four main dynasties, I think I'd favour the Nihilak Dynasty Code, just for the resiliency. The longer the arcs on the battlefield, the more damage it's going to be doing to your opponent. If you do want to go custom with the codes then, firstly you select one of the dynastic traditions. So the ones that suit the Doomsday Arc are the following. So you've got Eternal Conquerors, which also grants your objective secured. You've got Superior Artisans, which allows you to re-roll one moon roll. Masters of the Marshal, which allows you to re-roll one hit roll. So they're probably the best options there. Pair this up with one of the circumstances of Awakening. So I'll go through the best options here too. So you've got Healthy Paranoia, which adds three inches to your ranged weapons. Relentlessly Expansionist, which gives you an army-wide six inch movement after deployment, but before turn one. Now you might not think you need this, but Firstly, some mission packs have really odd deployment zones, so you can get your arc slightly out of danger. But also, you may have an objective slightly outside your deployment zone that you want to park it on, and it's not your turn, so it's not taking up any of your movement and it's not going to affect your cannon. Isolationist gives your Gorse Flayer strength 5 if fired at enemies within 12 inches, which is also decent, because this also helps your warriors and such too. Then lastly, you've got Interplanetary Invaders, which allows your arc to fall back and shoot, but at the cost of minus one to hit. The second part of this code won't actually apply to your cannon as it's got blast on both profiles, but normally the minus one penalty for shooting within combat wouldn't exist, but you can't shoot blast weapons in combat, so it's just the first part you're looking at here, which is being able to fall back and shoot at minus one to hit. So if I was to select out of those Dynasty custom codes, I think I'd go with the Masters of the Marshal to re-roll a hit roll, then maybe the one that lets you fall back and shoot. I mean, okay, it's a minus one to hit now, but you've got a single re-roll to help. So stratagem then, the techno oracular targeting, which costs you one CP. Once you've succeeded in a roll to hit with your weapon, don't roll to wound, it auto wounds. It only applies to one of your dice here, but against a tough top priority unit, it can be helpful. Stellar alignment, which costs one CP, as the arc isn't titanic, allows you to use the highest profile for the wounds remaining, so that you've got the highest amount of ballistic skill possible. This one's done in the command phase. The next one, for one CP, Curse of the Fair Run. Again, it's only one CP because you're not titanic. The arc gets destroyed. Don't roll to see if it explodes. It auto explodes. So if you get swamped down in combat by a unit or two, Choose to blow it up and start dishing out D3 mortal wounds to everyone within 6. Disintegration capacitors for 1 CP, done in the shooting phase. This grants all your gorse flayer shots that hit on 6s will auto wound. It's not the best option but I thought I'd mention it here. Quantum deflection. So this affects the arc as it's got the quantum shielding keyword. It costs 1 CP and it will give your doomsday arc a 4 plus in run rather than the standard 5 plus in run. So that's the generic stratagem covered. Let's have a quick look at the dynasty specific stratagem options then. You've got the Mephrit stratagem called Talent for Annihilation. It turns any sixes to wound into mortal wounds on top of the damage to a max of three per phase. So this applies to both your gorse weapons and the cannon. The Saltec code is a decent one, which is methodological destruction, but it is two command points, so quite pricey. So when a friendly Saltec unit is finished making its attacks against an enemy unit, all friendly Saltec units gain a plus one to hit against that target. So now your Doomsday Arc is hitting on twos. You can improve this stratagem actually by bringing a tryout Stalker. So you get your Stalker to fire at the start of the shooting phase against that targeted unit. Then it grants the rest of your army re-roll ones to hit against that unit. So pair this with your Doomsday Arc and that Saltic strat. You will need to fire something else at the target because the tryout Stalker doesn't actually belong to a Dynasty code. But when you do, you're now twos re-rolling ones to hit. You can apply this to your whole army as it's all attacks for the rest of the phase for both of those rules. So it's really powerful. It sort of makes me lean towards a Saltic dynasty now. Looking at other bits of synergy with a new book then, you can use Canoptic Spiders with their Fabricated Claws to heal D3 wounds per turn on your arc. And it's also a very good close combat defense unit for your arc because your arc's gonna be doing pretty poor in combat. So you use your spiders as a defense. Spiders are pretty good in this codex, they're pretty strong and they're very cheap for what they can do. And on top of that they can create scarabs that can shield your arc or even screen the arc from deep strikers. 
that want to appear in your deployment zone. And then of course the spiders can replenish the scarabs each turn too. If you haven't seen our Canoptic Spider review yet, I'll leave a link that should pop up in the top right of your screen now. Put that in your watch list, probably one of the most improved units in the codex. The Doomstalker however is giving it a run for its money due to the cost. For the same price of two Doomsday Arcs you can get yourself three Doomstalkers that have the exact same cannon and they've even got a 4 plus invine as standard. Other heavy support options such as the Annihilation Barge don't seem to have enough strength with their weapons. The Locust Destroyers do but they have a lack of invun save that really hurts their resiliency. The Doom Scythe from the Flyers Battlefield Roll is a good alternative as this has the Heavy Death Ray which is strength 12 and a guaranteed 3 shots but the Blast Keyword on the Arc does assist it slightly. So looking at the negatives here, being tied up in combat is going to deem the Doomsday Arc redundant. It needs to be shooting every round and it can't defend itself in combat so it will need babysitting. The Gorse Flayers are a nice way to fend off those pesky units tagging your arc I guess but it's something that the Doomstalker doesn't have as well. But all in all I still believe this unit to be a solid part of the heavy support choices, possibly even the best option we have. It's got a big strength gun, resilient, quantum shielding, decent ballistic skill. So I'm going to give the Doomsday Arc a planet 40k rating of 4 out of 5. Now bear in mind this rating is compared to other units within the codex. If I compare this to other heavy support vehicles within the whole of the 40k universe then it probably wouldn't do as well as this. If you're enjoying the videos then smash the like button below. Remember to subscribe. Check out our Patreon service with the link in the description. Polls are placed on our Patreon for reviews and video requests. So if you would like a certain unit to be reviewed by us then that's the way to go about that. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.